Hello everybody and welcome to the second race, I was about to say first race, the second race of the MSA American Ethanol Truck Series. We are here at Mexico City ready for the race. Here's your starting lineup, Arnold Von Hindenburg getting the pole and Kenny Washington going to be on his outside. Second row will be the number four of Russ Kamoski to his outside. It's a lot of Wade Enterprises versus Mally Motorsports. Kurt Trencherman and Al Agassi going to be row number three. Jason Kranz and Mitchell Henderson going to be row number four. Good qualifying positions for the two Revolution Motorsports trucks. Tristan Allen and Antonino Russo. Allen, a pretty good job for him. Alexander Rowe and Derek Yarworth going to be in row six. A couple of dodges in that row. Nick Pericles is going to be starting behind his teammate. And Steve Hickman going to be starting to his next next to him in row seven. Kieran Pangborn in row eight. Beside him will be the 76 of Zachary Fitzwater. Daniel Bouchard is going to be right next to Jennifer Power in row number nine. And in row ten is going to be Bill Cox in the first race for the 38 of Tanya Breyer. Row number 11 will be Nathan Hallman. Next to him will be Fratimar Otz, a good qualifying position for an unsponsored truck. 44 of Justin Zidell on the inside of row 12, and on his outside is the 03 of Ace Garcia, another first-time qualifier. Ed Ayin Jones, team owner to Jones Motorsports, next to his team driver, the, the 53 of Eli Bright. Mike Monacy and Eric Monaco will make up row number 14. Gatlin Downey and Isaac Nichols, another first-time starter. Uh, Stuart Gratton, also another first-time starter, next to the 68 of Rick Witt in row number 16. Row 17, Fernando Olieza and Derek Hamill in row number 17. And on your final row will be the 19 of Colin Denton and the 92 of Giovanni Barraza. Here are the drivers who did not make the race. Igor Barreto, Jack Porkins, Lucas Sky, Zachary Fitzgerald, Cesar Chavez, and Bob Schwepka all missing in their qualifying event. And we're going to take you to the track as Arnold von Hindenburg will lead them off of turn number four. This track is a pretty interesting track as it is inverted with how they usually run but here we go green flag is in the air as they head down towards turn number one at speed the 28 of von Hindenburg getting a nice run but at the same time Kenny Washington being able to lead him into the corner as a nice jump by the 90 truck to be able to get to the front but he's already facing a little bit of a uh, a speed difference between him and the 28 is Arnold von Hindenburg definitely has some speed on the bottom side especially in the corners and it looks like he might clear him coming out of the corner as the 28 definitely with some speed he almost does it but the 90 truck just barely gets to his quarter panel that could have been devastating if the 28 uh, continued to merge up we have some battling behind the 25 still fighting with the 88 to get who which position that is meanwhile Wade Enterprises trying to get behind their truck. Last week's winner, the four of Russ Kamaski, pressuring the 28, getting behind the 90 truck on the straightaways. But then the 28 gets the advantage on the corners because he does have the preferred line into the turns. It just all depends on if he can get the exit of the corner correct. And at the same time, the 90 truck gets a lot of drive off on the high line. So it's all a game of whether you can get a better run into the corner as the 28 truck. The 4 truck kind of loses a little bit. Now he's going to start pushing the 90 truck as he gets a better run off the corner every single time up in that high line. And we have Kurt Trencherman too also pushing his teammate in the 90 truck to see that, get, that they can get uh, him into the lead. This is a heated battle for the lead between the 28 and the 90 truck. The 90 finished second in the last race, and undoubtedly a win here would definitely put him into a good position as he would probably leapfrog his teammate in the 4 truck for the lead. And the 90 truck does a is able to clear the 28 on the, ex on the entrance into turn 1. So now the 90 truck of Kenny Washington will lead the race as Arnold von Hindenburg will fall in line in second. And now the 60 truck is under threat by the 3 of Al Legacy. Al Agassi diving down low, hoping he can get a run on the inside of the 60 truck. But at the same time, we saw how the inside lane can be a bit deceiving. Al Agassi currently back in 5th right now. But he is attempting to get by the 60 truck of Kurt Trencherman. Kurt Trencherman, I believe, is a first, uh, first race starter, as I believe he missed 
Texas World, so this is the first time he actually gets to uh, see what he can do in a racing situation, and already we can see that he's been doing very well on this racetrack. A very uh, notorious racetrack for uh, not being able to pass very well. It's one of those racetracks where it just really doesn't seem like he can pass all that well. However, as we go back to the back of the field, the heat kind of kind of sizzled a little bit and died down up at the front. We have two drivers battling who previously were unsponsored. Fratimar Otts in the 543 truck being sponsored by uh, Haritos Mexican Soda. And we have the 92 of Giovanni Barraza being sponsored by Telcel for this race. Both of those drivers came in unsponsored, but their qualifying efforts gave them some pretty decent sponsorship offers. And considering that they've qualified for both races, it's uh, really been a decent ride for these two drivers. However, they are mired at the back right now. Uh, Giovanni Barraza stuck back in the 29th position as Fratimar Otz is fighting with Fernando Olieza for 30th. So obviously a lot of unsponsored trucks getting shot to the back of this racetrack. And again, it's a racetrack that is notorious for not being able to uh, create a lot of passing opportunities as the 92 truck is uh, right behind Mike Monesey. Mike Monesey, one of the veterans of this series, and definitely one of the drivers who knows kind of the ins and outs of this of this racetrack, although has not been able to really procure a very good ride as he has not been able to uh, uh, really find a team, and I don't think he does really care about finding a team. He just really kind of uh, enjoys the uh, the fact of racing which is kind of why Mike Monesey is kind of stuck in that drop, stuck in that uh, in that car. However, we saw Ace Garcia, I believe, fighting with Jennifer Power, or that could have been Gatlin Downey. It's kind of hard to tell between those trucks as they are all painted the same color. You have to tell uh, by the sponsor, but two BCR Mercedes trucks were battling up in front of these two. But uh, Giovanni Barraza definitely glad to have that sponsor on as that gives him a little bit of extra wiggle room as far as the budget is concerned for that race truck. And it could also mean some further opportunities down the road if he continues to perform. However, one of the drivers who's definitely looking forward to this race is the 25 of Jason Kranz, who uh, has a history of winning at this track, especially in last season when he won under a green-white checkered condition after his teammate in the 39... Uh, ended up blowing a motor on the back straightaway. It left a whole bunch of uh, fuel and it left a whole bunch of oil laying on the tracks. So they had to dry that up. And it gave the 25 an opportunity to pretty much uh, pull out away. F it uh, almost diminished the 25's lead as he was actually leading the race at that point. And uh, Rick Witt and Bradford Onneman, the, dr the former driver of the number one truck, which is now being driven by William Brock on his own team. Bradford Onneman used to drive a Cadillac before he uh, exited the series after last season. They uh, both were giving the 25 a bit of hell in the back end uh, during that green-white checker condition. So Rick Witt, definitely another driver who was uh, doing quite well at this racetrack, although Rick Witt currently mired at the back as his qualifying did not show a lot of speed under that under the hood of that 68 truck. And I believe uh, his uh, his teammate Tanya Brayer in the 38 is uh, also uh, further in the lineup than he is at the moment, so obviously something not uh, quite right with that 68 truck. Maybe they don't have the setup quite correct, but the 25 definitely having to... Uh, to lay back here, see what the other drivers are doing, because he doesn't really know what these drivers are capable of, considering that most of these guys he's never really raced against. But he really does enjoy this racetrack, and you can see by the way he drives it, that he does really enjoy the kind of flat, low-speed cornered tracks that require a lot of braking to get through. However, the driver in front of him, Mitchell Henderson, uh, another good story that came out of Texas World was Mitchell Henderson finishing third. Revolution Racing lost one of their trucks early on in one of the crashes. That would be the three of Al Lagacy. And Mitchell Henderson ended up fighting with uh, two Wade Enterprises trucks, the two that are actually currently up at the front in third and first, Kenny Washington and Russ Kamoski. Mitchell Henderson ended up almost beating both of them 
and getting his first win of the season, but the uh, the two trucks ended up teaming together on the last corner and ended up pretty much uh, finishing 1-2, doubling on that front row. However, Mitchell Henderson is not a, a very good, uh, not, not a very bad slouch, as he's definitely shown that he has some speed under that hood. And he came in as a relative unknown, much like Frodemar Otz in the 543. He came in as a relative unknown. Uh, Revolution Racing actually gave him the spot, hoping that he would perform, and he has definitely performed for this team so far. Uh, his Their other driver, Al Lagacy, didn't really get much of a chance to perform in that last race, but now he's showing that he does have the skills as he has actually gotten by the 60 truck of uh, Kurt Trencherman, who never got to show what he is capable of and currently also running up at the front, now facing a threat from the 23 truck of Ryan Kendall, who has been seen in the ASCA League showing that he actually does have a lot of speed under him and that he can drive a car fairly well. And especially for the, uh, the RVR cars in the Copperhead Amateur Series, as I believe he almost won a race and, uh, or ended up helping Jack Porkins to get into his first victory. Jack Porkins currently not in this race, a disappointment there as he did miss the, uh, did miss the cut for qualifying. However, he is in underfunded equipment, so that could be a possibility as to why, as this track is not kind to drivers in underfunded equipment. However, Ryan Kendall still dogging the back of that 60 truck, hoping to get to the bottom side, as like I said, this track is very difficult to pass on, and if you can find your opportunities to pass, then they come to you relatively with ease. However, going back up to the front, we see Arnold von Hindenburg still trying to chase the back bumper of uh, Kenny Washington. Washington finished second at Texas World in a nice second place finish as he ended up passing the 88 on the front straightaway. Almost challenging for the win, but just falling short. However, he has shown a lot of potential, uh, but he hasn't really been able to use it in the Copperhead Amateur Series as he is a first time rookie in that series. And that truck and that car that he's running is for, I believe, Vincent Motorsports. So obviously a few different teams that he's been running for. Trying to find where he can fit in each series. And right now Wade Enterprises is definitely doing good to him. As he is currently running up at the top. And at this rate he's going to end up becoming points leader if he wins this race and nothing goes wrong. So... Obviously, they're crossing their fingers, hoping that he can win the race, hoping that Arnold von Hindenburg doesn't just skip one out under their nose and uh, take the win away from them and give it to himself. I believe also Arnold von Hindenburg actually had to qualify into this race. I'm not completely sure on that, but I believe he was one of the go-or-go-home drivers that had to qualify into this race. It may have been one of the other Mally Motorsports trucks, but I believe he was one of those drivers that did have to qualify in. However, looking to the bottom side of the 90 truck, just not able to get the runs into the corner that the 90 truck has been getting. As Kenny Washington, def definitely some speed, definitely has a good setup under this truck. And if he does win this, this could also mean the second win for Wade Enterprises in a row. And I don't believe we've actually seen this kind of domination from a team, especially in the first two weeks of a season. We did see a little bit uh, come alive from the 17 and the 25 of, of uh, Nathan Howman and Jason Kranz, both of those drivers being the top of their tier on that team, the highest caliber drivers as the others were replaced by rookies. And uh, they've just been very, very, very good in uh, showcasing, actually I believe they did win two in a row as the 25 did win this race and one of the next races was uh, Circuit of the Americas where Nathan Howman ended up winning after a very heavily dominated race by one of the drivers, uh, former drivers, um, in the number 40 Mopar truck, ended up getting wrecked out. Meanwhile, Kenny Washington still holding that lead. The 28 trying to go to the bottom, but the 90 immediately goes down to try and block that move. And it's just been a, a pretty much a living hell for the 28. Meanwhile, we see Al Lagacy has moved his way up 
into the third position while the four car or the four truck uh, has been uh, knocked back and quite a uh, quite a sight to see Al Agassi being able to pass here however he's just not been able to get the uh, the runs off on the 28 truck so we're gonna have to see if he's able to continue his run up to the front or if he's gonna get uh, stonewalled by the 28 truck as we continue to watch this uh, lead pack but at the same time we also got to talk about a couple drivers who we uh, we didn't really get to see a whole lot of one of them being Tristan Allen uh, one of the drivers who uh, is in a pretty awkward situation as he was uh, uh, he was considered to be doing uh, to uh, do fairly well uh, in a team that actually has some prowess and in a uh, in a driver's perspective that actually has some prowess but he was also one of those drivers who got mistaken who got uh, unfortunately wrecked out in that big wreck he was part of what caused that crash which uh, was in part due to a four wide situation with Alexander Rowe who definitely took one of the most wild rides that I've seen uh, in a while since Indianapolis where uh, one of the Cup Series drivers actually slammed into the fence and he was also the defending champion of the Cup Series so that literally tells you something about how the uh, the Cup Series drivers race in that series it's not really that dirty but it's also pretty uh, intense to watch these races meanwhile Tristan Allen currently behind the 26 of Antonino Russo and another driver who got wrecked out uh, the 37 of Daniel Bouchard one of the Dorellis Motorsports entries currently the second driver in that roster uh, current in uh, in the uh, running order the other driver is now a part-time driver of the 55 truck uh, so definitely a lot of uh, potential that we see in, in that team but another team that we saw potential in was Rogers Motorsports and quite a disappointment at Texas World as one of their drivers missed the cut, Isaac Nichols in the 13. Another driver that missed the cut uh, was Tristan Allen as he, uh, as he didn't miss the cut in qualifying but he missed the cut for the race itself and he had to qualify in for this race. I believe the only truck out of that team that survived and uh, was able to finish the race somewhat is Justin Zydell, the 44 truck, and he didn't survive very much as he was considered multiple laps down with a lot of damage to that truck. So obvious hardships for Rogers Motorsports hoping to get back uh, to uh, at least finishing well to how they hoped. However, going back to the lead, we got a few laps to go in this 66 lap shootout. No one, uh, the the reason and the reasoning behind uh, the 66 laps is mostly because no one really wanted to race to uh, have to use pit lane. As the pit lane on this track is not really suited for what this series requires, so they just shortened up the uh, they shortened up the running to make it so that way the trucks can make it without a single pit stop which kind of makes the racing interesting you may think that some drivers might actually end up losing out out on fuel or other things like that but they do have enough fuel to make it all the way as Kenny Washington crosses the line three laps to go and the 28 has just fallen off a little bit and as a, it, it seems like the fall off on the 90 car has not as much as what we've seen on the 28 car the 28 also having to deal with the three truck behind him so now he's in a bit of a bind if he wants to actually get to the lead or if he wants to just defend his position meanwhile the 90 truck obviously knows what he wants to do and he wants to defend his position as they cross the line getting the green flag signaling two laps to go and this is basically crunch time if you mess up here you're pretty much lost out so everyone has to be clicking on all cylinders everything has to be moving as smoothly as it can Kenny Washington obviously hasn't been uh, missing a beat on uh, how he's been running this race so far and has led almost every single lap since he since the drop of the green flag only those first few being led by the 28 as they were battling White flag is in the air, one lap to go as the 90 truck of Kenny Washington almost having to dodge an attack from the 28 
but the 28 just not with the runs. He doesn't have the positioning on the back of the 90 truck to even get a good run off the track onto the into the corner. And even then, he'd have to fight out on the bottom to drag race to the finish. He's going to probably step out, but Kenny Washington shuts the door as they head into turn number three. Kenny Washington, one more corner as they head out of turn number four. Down the long front straightaway, Kenny Washington going to win here at Mexico City and get the second victory for his team, Wade Enterprises. And a great job by the 90 truck to get that second win as Kenny Washington will hold off Arnold von Hindenburg and Al Legacy for the victory, the second victory for that team. Uh, Mitchell Henderson finishing sixth, fourth and fifth going to two more Wade Enterprises trucks. The, uh, the three of those trucks finishing very well in the standings. Uh, drivers whom we were watching earlier, Daniel Bouchard, Tristan Allen, Alexander Rowe, 10th, 11th, and 13th. So definitely good runs for those trucks as they really needed it after that last event. Uh, other drivers, Bill Cox with a 15th place finish. Justin Zydell, we talked about him, 16th. Kieran Pengborn in the 24 with an 18th place finish. Edain Jones, the highest in his team as the team owner. One of six races that he'll be attempting this season. So definitely good things coming out of that camp for the 59 truck of Edain Jones with a good top 20 finish. Here's the bottom 20, Jennifer Power. Definitely a bad day for BCR Mercedes as they finish back in the uh, in the uh, back of the field. Tanya Bray, definitely disappointing day for her with 22nd. Isaac Nichols, another disappointing day. Zachary Fitzwater finishing very low in the standings, especially for the truck that he has running. And just a lot of disappointing finishes for some of these drivers. A lot of that due to just poor qualifying. And then we have 36th, Mike Monesey going out with, I believe, an electrical issue or a camshaft problem on that 04 truck. So definitely something that he has to work on uh, for future races. But again, a lot of the drivers who ended up coming in unsponsored finished in the back of the field as this track was definitely not uh, suited for drivers with uh, subpar equipment. And uh, that can tell you something about some of the equipment is where they finish. However, point standings, Kenny Washington and Russ Kamoski, two teammates, two wins each. However, Kenny Washington getting a few more bonus points than his teammate, going up over him by four points. The 88 and Mitchell Henderson in third. Uh, Eli Bright, the 53, in seventh, tied uh, behind him are two teammates, Arnold von Hindenburg and Ryan Kendall. A definitely good finish for Arnold as he uh, moves his way up the standings. Jason Kranz with 41 points. He's going to finish in 11th here. Al Legacy, a good finish by him. We'll tie him with Justin Zydell at 13th. Eric Monaco, that finish dropped him down to 16th. Tristan Allen able to now lock himself into the Texas race. And Jennifer Power also losing out a little bit more as she drops down in the standings, as well as Derek Hamill. And here's the back of the field. Behind that 26th mark, Frodemar Otz is holding steady. And Gatlin Downey is just below him, so he will have to qualify in for the next race. So will Zachary Fitzwater and Mike Monesey. Drivers who are really on the bubble are Rick Witt and Daniel Bouchard, who are definitely not uh, too pleased with their finishing results. However, Bouchard did finish up in the top of the field, so he should be a little bit better off than he was in the last race. And here, kind of the bottom of the standings, drivers who did not race here were Alex Cage and Igor Beretta, who missed the race. Jack Porkins also missed the race. So, a few drivers who uh, ended up missing are down in this uh, part, or didn't race in general, uh, such as Alex Cage, who, was having an, who uh, has an off day. So... Obviously, some drivers needing to make up some points. Edain Jones, obviously not going to be able to run in the same. But that's going to do it all for your race here at Mexico City. I'll see you guys next time in the qualifying for Texas.